Education, of course, in South Africa. So, Thomas Charles, let's see, actually, uh, uh, he's talking now. And also, I think uh, you should have uh, friends, make friends. Mm -hmm. So when you when you go to the developing country, I think uh, a very uh, unique experience. Of course, the lack of the uh, equipment, the almost zero spot, nothing. They do not have anything. So the time we uh, hired of the sort of steady microscope from the company, and we did a demonstration surgery. So I think uh, uh, like the European countries, uh, the people, the male and female, they overcome uh, the, their uh, some of the lockings. So, and also, uh, this is uh, very interesting, uh, the video. Um, because India is very conservative in some countries, I think, because I've used it so many times. Yeah. But I think uh, this is the uh, inauguration of the Indian Premier Neurosurgeons Association. So, Indian 2016, almost, almost already eight years back. I think uh, every uh, resident. Especially uh, <laughs> want to eager to learn and also the the sports uh, save the greater blood. I think uh, uh, the Filipino the we can just uh, we recognize and also we uh, encourage them so they can do many things for the patient. Also. So the, during the COVID nineteen uh, the, uh, the time. And so we did so many uh, webinar series and uh, the, women, the women's activities and also the, uh, uh, the foundation is the uh, seminar and the uh, winter seminar and the resident the webinar. So we did uh, continue uh, continuous the education of course and then we can have chat and also not only the discussion but also uh, we can have uh, a female uh, medical students and doctors. Especially the Pakistan is a uh, very high uh, the level uh, because there's so many the medical students uh, 
is uh, uh, over, uh, association is organized uh, in Pakistan. So the uh, these are the some uh, the educational in the future. There are some target. So the, this is uh, one of the uh, residents in the in the surgery. So this is the ACOM Anderson. Maybe some of you understand. So recently, of course, the less invasive. Uh, so endovascular treatment is uh, uh, much popular than uh, open surgery. Sometimes uh, we need to do the classical uh, type of the open surgery. So this is just a uh, uh, 60 years uh, resident. He is he was dissecting with a severe fissure and uh, through, through the, the left um, torch. So the ACOM uh, aneurysm is located just uh, the middle line. So now we can uh, uh, expose of the, the aneurysm here. So aneurysm is a double, double shape. And uh, the wall is very thin. So I, I think uh, the step by step. So the, this is, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, of course, the, the man and the female, the both can do. So this is another case. Uh, this is a bypass case. So this is a preoperative uh, amula image. Recently, the 3D the image is, is very getting popular because we want to do the, some targets for bypass surgery. That means uh, is a very small punishment. We just we hit the exact place of the bypass. So it's very small, the tiny, the primary, and the uh, uh, we harvest, so we harvest of the um, time. So the we harvest of the um, SGA, the superficial temporal artery. Then uh, we can make a bypass, uh, the biggest, uh, the recipients. So you should finish the bypass surgery at least in the 30 minutes. So you need some training, so daily training. So because uh, anywhere you can do the training. So this is almost a 20 times magnification under the microscope. So the, this uh, the very precise work is, uh, I think, uh, the, uh, the male and the female doctor, the neurosurgeon. Must do, can, can do a thing. So, the, this is uh, the Asian Congress, uh, where we mentioned. So, these are the some webinars uh, which we did. So this is uh, the some alumni uh, association of uh, the, the webinar. So, we uh, it's a, a continuous the webinar, and uh, we can uh, discuss uh, the reasons. The, Knowledge and the, the skill mm. in, among the, our, our mm. uh, colleagues. So, this is really mm. neurosurgery in the uh, Asian Congress. And also, the, uh, the how can we balance for the both women? That is uh, among the best uh, concern, I think. So, I, I think uh, the promote awareness that there are equality of the sexes and uh, promote the training in the neurosurgery so that women are the majority, promote female leadership in academic positions. And maybe I think uh, uh, the surrounding people, the, especially the male the doctor and the mentor, can support the more female leadership. So offer accommodation or higher salaries for women in work, the, who work on the academic workplace. So I think uh, uh, if uh, uh, it were not for the efforts of these uh, exceptionally the strong individuals, the women or the women in neurosurgery would not have advanced to its uh, present day status. So this is uh, uh, some video for which I visited in Nepal. So oh, this is a medical student <laughs> association, all medical students in the society. <laughs> he invited all the medical students. 
So we had a very nice lecture and also the summer communication with them. So I think the uh, encouragement for the from the medical student is very, very important. I think. So this is some association of them, the medical, I'm sorry, the nursing <laughs> association. <laughs> So it's a basic uh, issue for neurosurgeon, a good person uh, versus a good neurosurgeon. So these uh, deepening the self-awareness and becoming a better influence, uh, the leading with the honesty, the improving the coaching skills, developing emotional intelligence. So these are the very important. So do no harm. So it's uh, the... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Um, uh, he is uh, Henry Marsh. Uh, he is a very, very uh, famous noise mm -hmm. So he is a father of the basic dilemma issue and uh, provides the concept of the do no harm in such case. Greetings, everybody. Come on now, someone say hi to me. I'm hi, Dr. Happy. John. Who's that? Hi, uh, Dr. Steve. Okay, okay, welcome. Welcome, you guys. I didn't think anybody wanted to talk to me. I think they think I'm living a tower and come down to run these webcasts. I'm sure everyone is just shy a little bit. No, it's like the the Notre Dame, you know, they got the hunchback. I come down, I come down the steps <laughs> of the Notre Dame, and I, I run the webcast, and then I go back up, back up in my <laughs> tower. Is anybody in contact with Samer? Has anybody talked to him lately? Uh, yes, Dr. John, I talked to him. Okay, everything's okay? Yes, it's all okay. Uh, okay. So he knows about everything? Yes, of course. Okay. And we just had a good webcast with Cuba. Cuba Grand Rounds. But that's in Spanish. You guys probably wouldn't uh, <clears throat> understand. So we're just waiting for Samer.
Hello, John. Hey, Zemmer, you good in? Okay, yeah, yeah your, your associate let you in. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, we're ready to start. Um, give me two to three minutes just to open yeah, the sure. links. Sure. So we are not delayed when we start. There is a water channel. What's that? Um, I don't know. Water sound. Let's stop. Um, just... uh, Borba came to our last conference. It was, it was just a small Cuba Grand Rounds, but he came. I, it was great. Mm. That's nice. Yeah, well, it gives a credibility when he shows up, you know? Um, he, he will come to U.S., isn't it? I'm sorry? He will come to U.S.? Yeah, oh, no, I don't, I don't need... No, it's afternoon here. It's no problem. Uh. I'm ready to go. I'm going to the gym after this talk. Okay, you need to. <laughs> yeah, I love the gym, man. It's so funny. I never liked the gym all my life, but not lately I've really got to like it. It's so convenient. You know, you just work out and go. Excuse me. Excuse me. You almost ready, Summer?
Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good afternoon. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from beautiful Miami Beach here in the background. Uh, we have another in Samer Hose, MD, uh, neurosurgery student uh, lovers mentorship program. In my opinion, it's the best one on the net. It's very interactive. Got a great group of students here. So I'll turn it over immediately to Samer. Welcome, Samer. Hello, John. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, John, for having us. Uh, thank you for the Neurosurgical TV uh, for making this possible. Um, this is the ninth uh, session of the ninth uh, House in Neurosurgery Mentorship. And uh, we are ready to start with the different topics today. Um, we have, uh, we, I will start with the residency snapshot. We will go through some uh, pictures from uh, what we have in residency, just a sample from the phone of resident. I think this is a unique experience and through which we, we can uh, uh, deliver uh, the idea about what what's the life of a resident in general will be and at the same time we can increase our our knowledge regarding the neuroradiology whether CTs MRIs uh, whether trauma whether tumors and and things like that um, after that I will go through a uh, one case presentation then followed by its related operative videos and after that, I have the third step will be a talk about research, something delayed for the third time. And uh, yeah, we are uh, unfortunate for today. We have the two speech uh, international speaker uh, delayed up to the next Saturday. The next Saturday will be the last session of this mentorship here at the same time. And uh, we will have them uh, hopefully at the next uh, Saturday. So, uh, uh, as as we as we uh, always uh, do, um, just if you have a question, put those those question as a note. Uh, we will listen to some question at the end of today's presentation, and uh, yeah, let's start with the volunteers. And so I can take you to the residency. Then I need uh, different volunteers uh, to the uh, case presentation. Um, I'm searching for new uh, volunteer to start with. Yes, yesterday we have the Mustafa Hikmet as a, a new volunteer. Um, yeah, I will start with the Zina and uh, Nicola for today and uh, Bakr. Okay, are you available, the three? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, doctor. Okay, so uh, let's go. Um, and I just want to start. So we have the first session uh, of uh, SNAP. We're not sharing there, Sam. We're not, it's not sharing. There we go. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> bigger. You want to make it bigger? Okay, perfect. Okay. So uh, I think we stop at this slide uh, at the previous mm -hmm. session of uh, residency snapshot, isn't it? Yes, it is. So uh, open your uh, mic, the, th uh, the three... Uh, Zina, Nicola, and Bakker. And let's start. So we end with this slide. It's, it's not clear. I want just to show you the image, what we mean by an extra axial, which means outside the brain. However, it's compressing the brain. And intraaxial means a lesion within the brain itself. So it's totally different regarding management and regarding the imaging. And there is a comparison between the two uh, about the radiological feature. This is part of residency. You need to go extra deep to compare steps. 
and uh, yeah there is a CSF cleft around around extra axial lesion it's a major difference and actually it facilitates surgery at the next step and now here we go we can start with this I hear my, I hear my voice um yeah Zina what do you see Zina Bakr Nicola uh, one, I think one term. Intra axial? Yeah, I would say the same. Yes, yes, the same. Uh, this is just a two directed uh, orientation. No, I'm not uh, asking about this lesion. Is it intra axial or extra axial? I'm asking about this, this CT scan is describing what? Because I cannot see the tumor clearly. I can see this. What's this? Let's start with this. What's this? One term. Maybe ischemia. Um, another suggestion. Hematoma. Another suggestion. So if you, if I see hypotenuse area with this shape, like fingers or this star shape. Fingers, stars, fingers, stars. So this is edema. There is a hematoma here, maybe a little bit. I can say this is ischemia, but it, uh, according to the color, but it should be in a different distribution. We have this before that ischemia should occur into a pattern, either from the cortex down, which is either here or here or here related to a specific artery, either anterior cerebral artery ischemia or middle cerebral or posterior cerebral ischemia, or there is a lacunar ischemia or infarction, which is very small dots. This is not related to either of these. So it's a different number one. Number two, we say that what we call this sign, any idea if there is a fingers, so there's a area without um hypodensity and we call it a cortical sparing sign this is a very important sign to differentiate ischemia from edema so for us as a from neurosurgery perspective this is hypodense area with finger like projection or a star shape a, a, a hypodense area so this is 100 percent for us it's a, an edema and the sign we call it cortical sparing sign so this is an edema, and there is a hematoma. And what's this? Air uh, the inside the brain. What we call the air inside the brain? Yeah. Um, aerosol or pneumocephalus. And why it occur? What's the relation between the two? If you see an edema and aerosol, any idea from uh, you? The treating injury. Oops, <laughs> it's it's a, if if I ask you about the pneumocephalus causes, one of the cause one of the causes is penetrating injury. However, it's not related to this case. You can see there is no. Mm, wounds, at least uh, edema from the wounds. There is no tract hematoma, so it's not a penetrating injury. Another suggestion for what what bring the air inside the brain? It's a tricky question. I'm sorry for that, but yeah, that's how we, how we should start. Uh, maybe, is the uh, yeah? Maybe doctor, maybe. Uh, I'm I'm not hearing who's the who's talking. Uh, me, disease. I said TB, doctor. Sorry. TB. Oh, um, no. Uh, uh, doctor, could it be from the air sinuses? Uh, who's this? Uh, I'm Tabarak. Uh, which which Tabarak? Uh, Tabarak Sabah. Uh, okay, no. Um, thank Sorry, you. Can I give a Sorry? Can I give a suggestion? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so could it be an anaerobic um, metabolism and infection? Mm, mm, no, like uh, a gas forming bacteria can cause uh, air in the brain, but but it will be just a minimum, just a, maybe not seen even in radiology. So this is more a theory rather than a radiological finding. Uh, the answer is post-op. So after surgery, this is a common finding. So you are correct when we start with, this is a tumor and this is intraaxial and these are the edema surrounding intraaxial lesion. And there is a hematoma due to resection cavity. And this is the air enter the brain like post surgery. So this is the second cause of Xena for pneumocephalus, but actually this is the first cause. This is the most common. Uh, and yeah, that's what, why I put this slide just to, uh, to, uh, to be familiar with the post-operative scans yeah. because it's not an easy job. And here you can see what's this? What's this? Uh, but, the site of entry. Um, okay, however, uh, who's, who's, who's saying this? Uh, me, Abdul Aziz. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, I, I accept that if it's a site of entry for surgery, you mean? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's important to discuss that there is a neurosurgical terms. When you say, when you say it's a site of entry, for me, you are describing an injury, a, a penetrating injury. However, we say this is a craniotomy site because the entry to the brain is going through craniotomy or craniotomy. However, this is the bone again in, in position. So you can see there is a cut here. I can increase it. There is a cut here and a cut here. So this is the craniotomy. This is the bone that we cut, remove, remove the tumor, then we re replace the, the bone again, okay? And usually I start uh, not asking about pneumocephalus like today, I usually start asking about this and people just mistaken this as a fracture. Then we start the same scenario. <laughs> I'm taking them to trauma. Then at the end, I say that this is a, just a post-op. And this is important just to have a, a, a visual experience about what we mean by postal. Another thing, so let's summarize this. What I see is that there is, a, this is a post-op CT scan. This is how we describe it in neurosurgery. This is a post-op CT scan showing a craniotomy site on the right, terrional maybe approach. And by the way, if you see this circular area, this is the draining tube that we put it under the skin above the bone. This is just the drain. And uh, we can see the aerosol or pneumocephalus, which is common post-op. Uh, this is normal finding post-op. And the resection cavity, we, are, we should search for the resection cavity. And the resection cavity in general is good. Maybe this is part of a tumor. I don't know. Maybe no. this is just hematoma, just a clot in the cavity of the tumor. Maybe, yeah, this is probably the cause. However, only the surgeon and the team know exactly what happened inside. But we are just uh, describing this. This is a resection cavity with the hematoma at the lower part or at the posterior part of the cavity. And there is surrounding edema. For the edema, this is also the decision for the surgeon or the team. Is it the same edema pre-op or it's better now? The, there is a midline shift. Yeah, there is a midline shift. And we should compare it with the pre-op to understand because sometimes just think with me, Zina, Nicola, Bakr, back, back to you. Just think with me that if, if I show you this and I say this patient is... Uh, undergone surgery and the, he's now improving. And this CT scan showing an improvement. Okay, so the answer maybe you can you can answer me that. Oh, what is the improvement? 
this is the important point that I want to put here is the comparison. You compare with the pre-op, then you say that it's improved or not, because I'm suspecting for this. After a section, a large tumor, then you can see the brain in better condition. You can see the edema less, the midline shift less, and you can see the cavity as just empty. So these are all confirmatory sign that this is a good surgery in general. And by the way, this is the initial post of CT scan. And this is just to have in mind that if, if we take another scan like one week later, it will be totally different. There will be less or no uh, uh, pneumocephalus. There, there will be less or no hematoma. There will be less or no edema. Okay. So it's a, it, it take time for the brain to resolve this uh, surgery. And now let's go to, um, uh, yeah. Um, so this is just a description about uh, meningiomas. So we, we are naming meningioma according to the location in, inside the brain. So these are very important. The lower row, this is the falcium meningioma when the base of meningioma attached to the falx and convexity meningioma when the base of the tumor, the meningioma attached to the, to the convexity. And this parasagittal it looks like maybe similar to this, but the difference it's attached to the convexity near the sinus rather than the falx. So the dif differentiation between those types of uh, meningioma is very important because this will change the type of surgery. And as we described before, the meningioma is extra axial. So you can see this is the mass and this is the brain. So it's outside the brain, compressing the brain. Tumor-wise, meningioma in general is one of the best lesion to treat because it's a benign tumor in general, like, like the majority are benign, and it's extra, extra axial. It's not inside the brain. So as an outcome, usually a very good outcome as compared to other lesions. Other types of meningioma is attached to the base of a skull. So we call it skull-based meningioma. If it's, if it's attached to the sphenoid wing here, we call it sphenoid wing meningioma. If it's uh, attached to the olfactory group, olfactory group meningioma, the sphenoid wing, there is median lateral foramen magnum meningioma, uh, clival cavernous meningioma, uh, tuberculum cilia, if you remember the tuberculum cilia in, in the skull, Cavernous sinus meningioma can occur anywhere, but I, I I put it here just as part of residency. You must know all the types, all the possible types of meningioma. And yeah, this is another concept that we we can see during uh, residency is that that part of congenital malformation. It's called Kari malformation. It's common in general as part of pediatric to see this. And uh, could you describe um, this for me? One of the three. Anyone? This is like, let's start. This is a sagittal MRI of a child. So this is the spine. This is the head. And what happened here? Um, can I answer? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Usam Dalal, a fourth year medical student from RC Saha Bahrain. Um, so, on the third image, I can see that um, there's herniation of the cerebellum and brainstem um, through an opening in the back of the skull. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, it's a herniation of the brain in general, let's say, because it's difficult to identify if it's a brainstem herniation or if it's a, a pure cerebellar herniation. But yeah, the idea is that uh, I'm I'm asking what's this part? What what we call this? Can I ask? Uh, encephalocele. Yeah, encephalocele, encephalocele. It's uh, it's a uh, extension of the brain. It it may contain CSF only or may contain a brain tissue with it. So this is very uh, strange and very uh, bad prognostic. Uh, malformation in general, especially if they include uh, a considerable amount of the brain. 
Uh, another so it's a type of chiari malformation. Another variation here, if you see in a close view, so this is also a sagittal MRI. This is the cilia. Okay, and what's this structure? Uh, pituitary. This is the pituitary. What's this? Mammillary body. Mm, this is the mammillary body. Can I answer? Be the chiasm. This is the chiasm. Mm -hmm. Is it the dorsum cilia? Yeah. Okay. So let's go zoom in. So this is the pons. Uh, sorry, med uh, medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain. Then there is a mammillary body, and this is tuber cinerium, and this is the infundibulum of pituitary, and this is the pituitary gland in the cilia. And this is the chiasm. This is lamina terminalis, or maybe this is lamina terminalis. This is the anterior cerebral above the chiasm. So we call it now A2 and going up to A3. This is the corpus callosum. Okay, this is the genome of corpus callosum, and this is the body of corpus callosum. And this is the basilar artery just standing in front of the brainstem. And yeah, this is the cilia. So this is tuberculum cilia, and this is dorsum cilia, and this is the clivus, okay? And when at the end of clivus, we can see the two bones. What, what's this area of the brain, of the skull? Foramen magnum. Yeah, it's a foramen magnum. And uh, it's maybe it's not a significant for you in the first vision, but with, with time, you will you will find it easy that usually the foramen magnum is less sizable than this, and usually it transmits only the, the junction from medulla oblongata to the spinal cord. And here in this example, you can see the cerebellum is just herniating and down through the foramen magnum. And this is one of the main characteristic of KRE malformation. So sometimes cerebellum can herniate posteriorly, sometimes can herniate inferiorly through foramen of magnum. So back to imaging. Um, what's this? Fourth ventricle. Yeah. And this? Cerebellum. cerebellum. Which cerebellum. part of cerebellum? The body. Sorry? The body. Um no. I, I didn't rec recognize the, the name, but it's not <laughs> in the center part in the vermis. The vermis. This is like because this is a midline section, because you can see the fourth ventricle and all structure. Then you think that this is not only cerebellum, this is the vermis. Okay. And what's this part? Superior yeah. cerebellar yeah. peduncles. Yeah, so that, that's correct. And this is the fourth ventricle. It's a stent like with the tent roof on this side posteriorly, and the tent floor is just anteriorly. And the tent floor represents the brain stem, while the tent roof represents the superior medullary villum and the inferior medullary villum. Okay. And if we go up, we will see the midbrain, and at the posterior part of midbrain, you will see two elevations. Okay, and uh, what's this? Uh, inferior and superior colliculus. Yeah, inferior colliculus, and this is superior colliculus. Inferior colliculus uh, function mainly with which system? Uh, auditory reflex. Yeah. Auditory, while the superior colliculus is more with visual. visual, visual pathway. And what's this structure? Um, is it? The... the pineal gland? Yeah, perfect. So this is the pineal. And it's, it's not clear maybe in this image. I will show you a better image. But I want you just to understand that this is how, how it may appear. So you can find the lesion or you can find the structure just through anatomical correlation. So let me have a, a rapid... A tour on this 
and in the in the following just listen to this so if we want to start let's start with this one this is should be the optic chiasm back after the opt by the way i'm i'm not seeing every detail it's not clear and this is on purpose like this is the optic chiasm and after that you should see the infundibulum of pituitary gland then this is the infundibulum this is the pituitary gland and the flat area after it, we will call it tu the tuber cinerium. And after that, there should be an elevation called the mammillary body. After that, there is a depression called the posterior perforated substance. Then start the midbrain perpendicular, which is the crust cerebri, then the pons, then the medulla oblongata. Back, this is the medulla oblongata. This is the uh, inferior medullary, uh, sorry, this is the tonsil of cerebellum down. Then above the tonsil, we, we can see the vermis, and here we can see the fourth ventricle, as we said, superior inferior medullary villum. And then from superior medullary villum, this is the inferior colliculus, superior colliculus, two bulges. Then from superior colliculus, it should go anterior, then back posterior. So the anterior bend is the posterior commissure, and the posterior bend is the pineal gland. Then from the pineal gland, we can go up to form an angle, this angle called habenula or habenular trigon. Then from this habenula, there is a line running forward called the stria medullaris thalami, and which ends at the interior of the thalamus, this is the thalamus, and at the interior of thalamus by forming the, it should be like the anterior commissure. I am expecting the anterior commissure, this one, this may be only the foramen of Monroe. So the stria medullaris thalami to the anterior commissure, and from anterior commissure, there is a line down to the chiasm called the lamina terminalis. So by this, we uh, investigate the, all the midline structures. And by the way, it's for the cerebellum, the unclear cerebellum here, uh, there is uh, the first area of cerebellum we call lingula, then the central lobule, then the, there's this primary fissure, which is the only fissure on the superior surface of cerebellum that is significant fissure because uh, it, it separates uh, the, the culmen from uh, declive. And then there should be horizontal fissure. I cannot recognize, but it should be not in the equator of cerebellum, just a little bit down. So I'm, I'm expecting this line as the horizontal fissure separating the folium from tuber. Then down, you will see a pyramidal structure here, like a, a shadow of triangle, which is the pyramid. And the last structure of the vermis will be the nodule here. That's how we want to go through structures. And uh, if I want just, I want to go to, um, just go to Google and we, I put uh, sagittal brain MRI. This is not correct, sagittal, by the way. And yeah, I, I, I need one and no pointers. Oh, let me save this. I want just to confirm this through um, some more clear image because this is very important. Not everybody know exactly this cycle. And if you learn this through imaging, it will be very, very important. This is full, filled, with, filled with the... Um, answers i don't like it but yeah just i want to show this and we have two or three because this is like a real um a radiology uh, aspect uh, okay and the last thing sagittal brain without mri and I want to see just a brain because this is how we study during residency. You go through a specific uh, topic, then continue, then continue, then go deep and more details and more details. That that's the important uh, aspect because it's it's not a there's a no time limit 
to understand more about the brain because you are practicing this every day and you are not allowed to say that I don't know this. You, you should study more and more. I think this is very nice. Uh, similar to anatomy books. I think that's it. Let's go and see. Uh, now I, I will go through one or two, then start ask you, Zina, Nicola, and um, Bakr. And so be ready. So let's start with this. This is simple illustration. By the way, this is exactly how we study anatomy. We go through illustration first to understand the structure very clear, then go through imaging, which is also clear, then go through cadaveric or operative videos. That's that's this the, the sequence, or sometimes we can see the cadaver before the radiology. It's up, up to the availability. So again, what I want you to learn this, this is the midline structure. So we'll start with where from the optic chiasm, there is a funnel or infundibulum called infundibulum of pituitary gland. This is the pituitary, then a flat area called tuber cinerium. There, there should be elevation here called mammillary body. So we all no, know now that this is not a perfect illustration. And then we go straight to see uh, vertical to see the cross cerebri. And this, this is, by the way, the oculomotor emerging from midbrain. And this is the pons, and this is the medulla. Back through medulla, we can see here the tonsil of cerebellum, and this is the vermis of cerebellum. And what, what are the structure of vermis? The lingula, then the primary fissure with C and D, C before D uh, after the culmin and the cliff. Then the horizontal fissure with F and T, F folium T tuber, then this pyramidal, large pyramidal structure is the pyramid of cerebellum vermis with the pre and post pyramidal sulcus. And at the end, you can see the nodule. And this is the fourth ventricle. So this is inferior medullary villum, superior medullary villum, and this is the cerebral aqueduct connecting the fourth to the third. Then go back to our friends. From the superior medullary villum, we should see two bulge. Now, me and you, uh, uh, like discover that this illustration is not good enough, is not accurate enough. Are you agree with me? Because we should see the inferior colliculus, which is the auditory one, and superior colliculus, uh, which is the visual uh, pathway one, and the posterior part of midbrain. And by the way, this aqueduct separates the midbrain into anterior part, which is the tegmentum, the large one and the small part posterior called tecmen, uh, called tectum, tecta. and the the post the this tectum also another name for the posterior part of this tectum called the quadrigeminal plate. Why quadrigeminal? Because there is four gemini, there is four uh, uh, circles, and this is the four colliculi. So we have two colliculi on each side. Inferior here should be superior here. Then what we said. From the superior colliculus, we should go in, then out, or anterior, then posterior. And the in is the posterior commissure. Then the out is the pineal. And from the pineal, there should be angle. Obviously, this is not a good illustration, but I want to continue with this because this is how some imaging are. And uh, this should be a space for habenula or habenular commissure. Then from that, there should be a line in the thalamus called the stria medullaris telemi, which end more anterior below the, this is the foramen of Monroe collect, connecting the, the lateral to the third, to reach this structure, which is the anterior commissure. And by the way, there is a three commissure in the brain, all in the same level. And this is very important from functional point of view, because this is the anterior commissure, this is the posterior commissure, and this is the interthalamic commissure or the thalamic commissure or interthalamic adhesion, or we call it in the neurosurgery operative, we call it the massa intermedia. So these are anterior commissure, thalamic commissure, posterior commissure, and usually they are at the same level. Then from anterior commissure, there is a if you remember what I said, there is a line connecting down to the chiasm, which is the lamina terminalis, which is the structure we just opened yesterday to connect the third ventricle to the cistern and to the subarachnoid space. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just talking about that. 
obviously this is uh, mm, I can't say this is a disaster. Uh, you can you can tell that what is the chiasm, what is the infundibulum, what is the uh, colloquial, what is the posterior commissure. This is not this is not a good one. Just to show you that neuroanatomy, a medical student level, is totally different from neuroradiology and neurosurgery. You need to uh, go through more and more pictures, more and more illustration to consolidate your information. I want to go with you uh, the the three Zina uh, Nicola Bakker, and I will ask you one by one what what I can see here. So, what's the structure? Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, oh, what's this structure? Uh, the pituitary. Okay, and this one? Infantibulum. Okay, and this is infantibulum. So without clear image, I can tell what's this and what's this. That That's what I'm trying to teach you today. That once I know this is a pituitary, so obviously this is infantibulum, and obviously this is a chiasm. Yeah. And this is the lamina terminal. Uh, this is the uh, tuber cinerium, sorry. So this is chiasm, this is tuber cinerium. And when, when I go to tuber cinerium, I found a structure called- Mammillary body. Mammillary body, it's clear now. And what's this area between mammillary body and midbrain? Cerebri? This is cross cerebri, this is mammillary body. And there is something I say here, there is a, uh, as a perforated area here called posterior perforated substance. Posterior perforated substance. Okay, this is important. Yes. Then we go to bone, medulla, and this is the foramen magnum. So this is spine, not this is spine, this is medulla. This spinal cord cervical, this is medulla. Going back, I can say this is a maybe tonsil, maybe, but this is definitely the cerebellum. If I ask you what is what, what what's this fissure? Anterior, the superior vessel. Yeah, or primary fissure, primary. or fissure prima. This is very important. And what's this fissure? Horizontal, transverse. Yeah. This is very important. If you remember what I said, that from studying anatomy, I know this information, that the this is the equator. Below the equator, you will see the horizontal. The horizontal is not really horizontal, dividing half and half. Okay, so these observations are very important uh, while studying radiology and then surgery. And we say that this is inferior medullary villa. And this is the superior, superior medullary villa. Cerebral yeah. that. <laughs> inferior colloquialism, uh, superior colloquialism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicola Zina Bakar. Posterior commissure? Yeah. This is posterior commissure. And this is I don't see it, but should be pineal. I don't pineal, see the so. I don't see the habanilla, honestly, but but I can see this. I like this because this is this is part of advanced anatomy. Not all people understand these deep structures. What's this? It's Something on the, yeah, the stria medullaris. Actually, stria medullaris thalami because there is another stria medullaris at the back of brainstem. So the stria medullaris should be should end in something, but that something should be at the same level with this something and this something. <laughs> and yeah. those the three are the commissure, okay? So anterior commissure and the anterior part of third ventricle now, and the posterior commissure is the posterior part of third ventricle, and the thalamic commissure is the middle part of third ventricle. That's why we call it massa intermediate. And by the way, the tumor of the third ventricle are divided into tumor in front of mass intermediate and tumor behind mass intermediate, because this will affect the treatment strategy, just to give you information. And what's this? The lamina terminalis. Lamina, lamina terminalis. 
and maybe it's open i don't know but i can feel that it's it may be an open structure and what's what's this this is a bigger question <laughs> what's this structure It's not aerosol. It's not pneumocephalus because this is MRI. <sighs> this is the anterior cerebral artery. This is the anterior cerebral. I don't know why it's black here because this is not T2, but ca I can say this is the anterior cerebral because it's going as a branch here and then a branch here, then go up here. So it's definitely anterior cerebral. Okay. And this is the corpus callosum is the rostrum, genome, body, splenium. And I think that's, that's a good coverage for it. You can take screenshot if you want now. And uh, yeah, this is like uh, some, something to take home from today's presentation that there is hundreds of pictures like this, but we go through some ideas about how to study because it's not about just to study oh this is this structure this is this no connecting structures and anatomical landmark this is very important this is the same as what we want to do inside the surgery again it's the same so um, what i can see now obviously i can see this Okay. Um, uh, who's saying, who, who's saying this? Uh, okay. So the idea, if you if you go out, there is something, then something, then something. Okay. If you see this, in out, then out there. Okay. And that that's very important. That that's very similar to surgery. And now you are just. Uh, you can you are able to do to see something that not very obvious. Anybody anybody else can say that oh it's not clear. I cannot say no. I can say I should say by the way because this is definitely inferior colliculus and this is definitely superior colliculus. Even if it's flat here, it's one hundred percent superior colliculus. And this is the posterior commissure here, this area, and this is definitely the pineal. And this angulation, a little angulation, this is the habanilla. And this is the striomedullars. This is the fornix. And this is the, obviously, the anterior commissure. This is the mammillary body. This should be this, the thalamic commissure, uh, chiasm. I can say that this is the infundibulum and the pituitary is not there. And that's the important. You can determine which is there and which is absent. And what's this area between the fornix and the corpus callosum? Septum pellucidum? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's septum pellucidum. So this is important because some more, I think most of these structures already you know it through medical school, but putting them in a more reliable uh, test like anatomy will be, will be very useful. I don't know where we are. I'll try to see the pictures. Um, is it closed? So you are now free. Uh, Zina, Nicola, and Bakr. I need another three. Okay, thank you, Doug. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah, let me check. Um, Noor Majid? Yes. Uh, Jafar and Tabarak. Okay. 
Let's continue some residency snapshots. Oops. I see already part of these. Yeah. So I think we, we get some idea about KRE. I don't I don't need any detail. You don't need any detail, which is KRE one, which is KRE two. No, just to have an information about KRE is a problem at the cranial cervical junction, and that's it. Uh illustration ideas through illustration, that's very important. Um this is a just a hidden uh, aspect of part of your study as a resident. You need to know the, the roots, okay? You need to know the muscles, okay? You need to know the movement for each root. And it's not an easy process, I can tell you. And you need to remember this again and again and again with the frequent examination for the patient. Because we, as a neurosurgeon, we are not a good examiners for the patient. This is a general rule. So and knowing more about the physical examination and the advantage of the of getting some idea through ex direct examination of the patient is something to be developed more and more in the field of neurosurgery. So I'm talking to medical student. I can tell you, focus on these at your level because you will need it to improve the level of uh, understanding on the level of communication in the future. Uh, this is, I put it just to show you something. Uh, we have three volunteers, isn't it? Can you describe what you, you can see now? Could it be a, a tumor from the brain? Okay. Okay. Mass. It's, it's the same. I, we don't have mass. Uh, mass means we don't know this structure. When we say tumor, means we know this structure. So it's either tumor or mass. When we say it's tumor, it's that this means that we know this mass is a tumor. So that's it, a tumor. And do you think it's intra or extra axial? Extra, extra axial. Yeah, maybe. I, I would suggest mostly it's extra axial. And if I say that, what's the wrong with surgery? <laughs> That's a big question, but let me give, give you a clue. Because I put this picture based on ob objection. I don't like this picture. The, the cause is depend on two structures. The first is that the mass usually, if it's such large mass, in the advancement of neurosurgery, we don't like to remove this mass as a full mass, okay? We do internal decompression. Then it's just a, like a cover only, and then we remove the cover. This is better for the brain. Let me put this in another statement so you can understand more. So getting the tumor full and the brain more injured is not the new neurosurgery. The new neurosurgery is to get the tumor out. However, it may be in pieces just to preserve the brain. If you understand my point that manipulating such large mass and then creating a space to get it out will, will cause more brain injury than if you get it, we call it piecemeal. I mean, part by part. Do you get the point? Yes, it's a clear. Yes. Okay, so now the second objection about this picture is that, can you give me an idea about is the craniotomy size or sight is correct? It's incorrect. Why? It's easy to say that uh, this is this is wrong, <laughs> but okay. why? Um, uh, because uh, the correct craniotomy is detect the s detect the side of the lesion. I don't understand anything. Like I need more clear 
description, less words and direct answer. This is regarding the size and site of craniotomy with this tumor removed. What's the second incorrect or what's the second not typical, let's say? We cannot say it's totally patient, incorrect. Is the patient in a prone no. position? <laughs> I answer no before I listen to the question because yeah. it, it's, it's visual. The so, location of a craniotomy. That's it. Which will which would which should be what? So the location of the craniotomy Directo. is 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 wrong. Which should be what? Direct to uh, the site of the mass. Okay, I I like the the less wording that you are using. However, it's again not mass. Let's say it's a tumor. So, <laughs> yeah, you you are definitely correct. The location, the size is correct. Okay. However, the location is definitely is definitely not correct. Why? Anybody can tell me why? Uh, may, maybe, doctor, because of if the size is not corresponding to the tumor size, it makes the probability of injury of the nearby tissue more likely. That's that's a point, and I can agree with the surgeon that. That's why I started drawing once you put the comment, because I'm expecting this, that this is tumor, can you remove it by this size of craniotomy? The answer is yes. Okay, so it, it makes sense. However, the location is it doesn't make sense. Like if you open this green craniotomy and then you find the tumor is, is just in the down corner. This is not this is not typical. Do you get my point? Like we are we are what we want to say here that if this is the lesion, the craniotomy should be here. Okay. Let me ask you a question, Abdul Aziz. What's the advantage of having this part of the brain exposed? This part. Do you have an idea? Relaxation with the do surgery? Mm, relaxation of what? Why what? I expose this part of the brain? What's the advantage of maybe, getting maybe, this? Maybe to have more space in order to visualize the region. Like, uh, let me ask you a question. Is, is this part of the brain, the red part, is not enough for you to see the, the, the tumor or to manipulate the tumor? For me, it is enough. <laughs> yeah, and for me too. That's why we can comment, this is part of, of teaching, that if I, if I were in that surgery, I will say the same thing. For the resident, maybe he's my colleague, he's... Just I will suggest that maybe this part of brain next time we will not expose it, okay? And this is we call it a planning for craniotomy. With the time, I I want to put this very clear. If I'm I'm talking to a resident here, I will say the following: If you are a resident, you will start with this, and it's good by the way that you have the tumor out, at least. And the brain looks not very injured. We don't know what happened with the brain here. However, I will say that with the time, this will come to this side. And before you get to the final year of residency, the tumor should be perfectly in the center of the craniotome. Do you get my point? That localization means that you are doing a better planning. Having a large craniotomy with the tumor just hidden behind, and by the way, it's in a cleft. It's not in the, in the out, in the, just in the corner. It's in down in the cleft. So this means that this is not a, a typical, let's say, and something just to note, to put in mind to improve. This is one of the direction of improvement. And I think, you can tell now 
this is very important aspect. You cannot appreciate this before thinking like a resident. But once you are a resident, you will understand that, wow, why you, I, why you get just this much of a brain for no reason. If the craniotomy is just around the tumor, okay, you should center the tumor. You should have a brain around the tumor for manipulation, for a little bit traction maybe, but you don't need such uh, um, out of point. This is out of point, out of the box craniotomy. Okay, is that clear? But uh, doctor, now even for the resident, a uh, brain mapping devices make it easier for them to make the craniotomy. Is it right? Uh, let me suggest that this is Abdulaziz. Yes. Okay. So again, I, I, the brain mapping means you you are you are uh, talking about the brain navigation. Yes, yes. Yeah, because mapping means in your physiology. And this is just sh shift the point. But yeah, you, you are you are right. The navigation makes things easier, but I can tell you that everybody in every exam, in every surgery will depend on the craniotomy side because the navigation not always available, not always precise, and it can be just delaying to the surgery sometimes. So even for a final year exam, and let's say in FRCS and European exam, in the American board exam, you, you will find this as a very important uh, technical point. And I think the last American Association uh, meeting in, in, um, in Philadelphia, there is a full session on that from the pioneer of neurosurgery. They are just focusing about, wow, residents are with the time losing the experience with how to locate a craniotomy. And this is very important talent and the skill that should you should not forget because this uh, consolidate the anatomical knowledge that you have. And this make the navigation a refinement device. The navigation is a refinement. Is is not, I don't know where to put the liege, the craniotomy at all like this, then you bring the navigator. No, I know this is the this should be the craniotomy around the lesion. Okay, but I need the navigator to get all the edges within. You get my point? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's important. And I think around the world, if you are dealing with the extra dural or subdural, there is no there is no role for navigation. It will take much time. And the same thing applied for those. I, it's, I, we, di we discussed that this is an extra axial mass or tumor. So for extra dural hematoma, I mean epidural hematoma, it's also extra axial. So locating the craniotomy, surrounding the lesion, precise location of the craniotomy, let's say, is mandatory. And yeah, as you said, the use of navigation may be of make this uh, issue just overlooked. And that's why we want to insist on that because this is, this is very important. And it, it depends 100% on your knowledge of anatomy. Uh, that's that's the point why I why I operate in this direction. Uh, what's this? What's this? Sutures. Yeah, this is the lambdoid suture, and I put this. I don't know why I put this. By the way, I we say that this is just residency pictures, but I think. This is just to show you that these bulges or these grooves are the sinuses grooves. So one important thing is that I want to ask you, what's this groove for? This is the brain. We are looking posteriorly. And this is the cerebellum. This is the cerebrum occipital lobe. And what's this groove? Transverse sinus. Perfect. Who is this? Roger. Perfect, Hajj. And now I should ask you another question. Where is the transverse sinus now? In the skull? Uh, no, uh, I think uh, not really. Remo not removed? Yes. Okay. 
I'm expecting that. Thank you for your first answer and thank you for your second um, wrong answer. So <laughs> this is my point. Like if you see this area, this is a skull and this is a groove inside the skull. And the groove for, as you said correctly, is, this is groove for transverse sinus. However, the transverse sinus is a sinus within the dura. It's a venous sinus within the dura matter. So it's this is the transverse sinus. We are looking to the transverse sinus directly. Okay? And that's why we put this picture because you need more and more imagination about the shapes. It's not only blue. It's not only bloody. Sometimes, obviously, in this case, the dura is very thick. And then you can see the sinus as only a groove here. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm. Yeah. So back again. Who's on test now? Uh, Noor, Tawarak. Yeah, Tawarak, I think. Yeah, doctor, I'm here. So what's this? Where? I don't know, really. Okay. And what's this? Who said arachnoid is correct? And what's this? Mammillary body. Yeah, Mohammed. Uh, optic chasm wrong. This is mammillary body. And now I want to continue with Mohammed, Mohammed Imaran. Because you say mammillary body, you should continue. What's this? I don't so I don't see a structure, by the way, but I'm reflecting on what we studied just now. Okay. If this is mammillary body, what's this? Anterior commissure? No. If this is a military body, what's this? And what's this, by the way? Only Muhammad. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> let's let just let's imagine the sagittal MRI again. Mm -hmm. Go to go to Google. Just just see the sagittal MRI. Do you have a screenshot for what I ask for today? Yes. Yeah. Just go for your screenshot. Uh, okay. <laughs> Because this is very, very important lesson. Do you get your screenshot? Yes. Do you, do you get your mammillary body? Yes. So what's the structure in front of mammillary body? Uh -huh. It's not in the pointed uh, structures? Yes, it's not pointed. <laughs> okay. For, uh, Tuber cinerium. Yeah. And what's what structure behind the mammillary body? Uh, and the mammillary body, uh, cross cerebri. Yeah, and we said between the cross cerebri and the mammillary body, there is a, a, a small area with perforations called the posterior perforated substance. This is very important. This is just a window. A spot then start from it. And now this is the basilar artery giving the superior cerebellar and posterior cerebral. And do you know what? The perforator arteries, just a small artery like this, arising from the basilar tip, should go to the posterior perforated substance. And we call it posterior thalamo perforators. So it's connected. I know this is a posterior perforated substance because just below the basilar tip. And what's this structure? Optic. Muhammad, Muhammad. Optic. No. Uh, ocular the, motor. Yeah, because optic should be there anterior. So okay. ocular motor. So why this is ocular motor? If 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 you only see this from the midbrain and it's between the CA and PCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you see what I, I am showing you? If yeah. you only see this, that there is two arteries, a nerve between them. So th these two arteries is the PCA and superior cerebellar, and the nerve is the oculomotor. This is very typical. And what's what what's the title of what we are discussing now is the anatomical landmark, the importance of anatomical landmark, because you don't see a typical anatomy in a real patient. That that's very important. And what's this area, Mohammed? Uh, Let's continue, with Mohammed. You will get a PhD in this picture. <laughs> 
the point? Pawn. Why it's pawns? It's bulging and it's uh, and the bezeler is lying over it. That's very important because there is bezeler, there is bulging. Yeah, this is definitely pawns. And now let's go to the most important question. What's this area? Uh, temporal loop. Perfect. Which part of temporal loop? Uh, insula. Mm, no. <laughs> insula in the depth of Sylvian Fisher, and it will not reach the near the midline. These are midline structure. So oh. le let me give you the most important information just to add to your good information about this picture, is that once this is the oculomotor, the lateral part will be the mesial temporal or the medial temporal, and this is the uncus. That's why when there is ankle herniation, there is compression of midbrain and oculomotor, and there will be dilatation of the epsilateral pupil. Okay? I'm, yeah. I'm trying just to enjoy studying neurosurgery. Just I'm, I'm figuring we are studying together. That's, that, that's, that's how important. Like, yeah, sometimes you remember picture of surgery, sometimes imaging, sometimes just a relation, a theoretical relation. And uh, let's go. What's this? Telovular approach. <laughs> Telovular means posterior. No, this is not the shape of cerebellum. Yeah. Cerebellum has characteristic folia and uh, fissures. This is a cerebrum. Mm -hmm. Anybody has any idea? If you if you imagine right this, loop. sorry, the parietal loop. Who's saying this? Jaffer. Uh, no. I believe it's. Thank you, Mohammed. I will continue with Jaffer. Let me get Jaffer. Which uh, Jaffer? Um. Hassan. Jaffer. Ah, uh, Jaffer. Hassan. Hassan. Yeah. So Jaffer. Uh, it's difficult to find. What's this? This is a mess. This is a cotinoid patty filled with the blood. There is a dura. There is something like, I don't know what, what it is, but there is maybe a resection here because I can see a surge seal, which we say that this is a hemostasis. We put it to protect the brain. And this is the brain. And maybe this is parietal, maybe. But if I tell you that this is the supine position, patient inside the OR. So the patient lying flat on his back and you are the surgeon looking. So what's this? And it could be the frontal. Not could be, it must be the frontal. If, if, if you are the surgeon now looking to this patient and the patient is lying supine, you open the front part of the head. So this is the frontal lobes, okay? And this surgery we called bifrontal approach. So basically, Jafar, we are opening the forehead, the full forehead. Okay. Okay. And now we are elevating the brain and removing a tumor. This is I I would suggest this is a large uh, a resection cavity for large olfactory groove meningioma Be because this is the olfactory groove. And the, and the anterior crane fossa in the midline. And there is a resected area of the tumor. Now the question is that, where is the fox? There should be a fox here or not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where, where, where it's going? So it should be in between the lobes of the frontal? Yeah, it should be. But it should be attached to this crusta galli. And so crest. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a part of the procedure. Just to let you know that we can cut the anterior third of the suprasagittal sinus just to release the brain and we can remove the tumor. This is part of the procedure, okay? To cut the falx cerebri anterior third. However, for the middle and posterior third, it's not allowed. It's very critical and may, we may lose the patient because these are very important venous structure. However, the anterior third, it's still not draining main, major part of the brain. So we can cut uh, to resect the tumor. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, what's this? So transverse CT scan, uh, obviously. Uh, uh, there's a craniotomy, I think, on the right side. Axial CT scan, you are correct. This is a craniotomy site. Now we are learning this easy, and you can see there is a a little bit, and this is a frontal air sinus. And um, what's this? Okay. So air in the base of the skull, maybe? No, the air in the base of the skull like this, this means this is air sinus. This is normal. So let me get you through this. This is the triangular area uh, on the sides of the nose. So this is the maxillary air sinus. This is the zygoma. And this, these are should be the mastoid air cells. However, it's extended more than normal. And this is part of some people have hyperneumatized the skull. It's not an abnormality by itself. And this is like a sphenoid sinus, sphenoid air sinus. It should be like in the midline as a sphenoid air sinus. However, in this case, it's extended on all direction. The answer is normal. However, this is not the quite normal. It's a variation that some people have hyperneumatized the skull. There is more extensive sinuses. Do you get the point? Yeah, that's clear. It's a variation. Okay. So this Hello. is just example. Um, may I ask a question? I'm Zahra Hadi. Okay. In the previous uh, in the previous uh, pictures, I'm wondering what happened to uh, superior sagittal sinus uh, if we remove the fox cerebrae. That's the point. It's not removal. It's a cut in the fox cerebri and we cut the sinus. So we put a ligature, we ligate above and below, then we cut in the middle. So we have two ends cut of the sinus and including the, uh, of the fox, including the sinus. And nothing Then will... after the operation, is it okay? We return it back? Uh, if it's not okay, we will not do this on our patients. So <laughs> the question is that, is it, uh, uh, this is a safe step or not? And that's what I yeah. already, uh, that's why I already answered that the first third of the supersagittal sinus, we can cut because it's not draining many parts of the brain. However, in the middle third and the posterior third, we cannot do the same. That's that's why I put this point. And thank you for your question because just you are re rethinking the process and now you are figuring that, wow, they put they cut the sinus? Yeah, the answer, we cut the sinus. If it's anterior third and th there is an indication, it's not a luxury. We need to cut this just to remove the tumor because in olfactory groove, it's obviously you can see this is a bilateral lesion. So how we, we can remove both sides without removing the sinus. However, this is surgery. You can do the same surgery without cutting this. You can remove it from sides. It depends on your experience. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So the target is to protect the brain and to remove the tumor. And you should do both of them together. Let's go to, this is just an example. Still, we are in the residency snapshot. So this is ependymoma versus astrocytoma. This means that we are discussing the cervical tumor because these are very common exam questions. Um, yeah. Now, Taha Osama, join, please. What's this? Yes, Taha. Okay, what's this? Um, an extra exa uh, axial uh, tumor. <laughs> you are afraid to say hematoma because yeah. it's too large. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. It's it's an epidural hematoma. It's a simple epidural hematoma. However, the CT scan you can describe it as a there's a brain, a little brain inside hematoma, uh, <laughs> because it's yeah. This is just an example of how huge can epidural hematoma be? Obviously, this is a child, not adult. 
So the brain is more lax, and maybe there is already brain atrophy that permit this hematoma. I don't see this like maybe once in, in the whole residency, but this is just a huge, just to show you, that's why I put this residency snapshot because as a, a neurosurgery um, aspire uh, about learning about neurosurgery, this is what you should see more extradurals, extensive extradural, calcified, calcified extradural. Do you, you get my point? So at that point, at that point, you will be uh, appreciating or understanding the real neurosurgery rather than the few bullet points that are required during medical school. So during medical school, extradural, biconvex links. Thank you, bye-bye. But here, it's totally different uh, story. And now you can see also there's dilated ventricle as a result of this compression. Every ventricle is just dilated. This is temporal horn, this is occipital, this fourth ventricle, occipital horn, all dilated. What's this? Calcification. Choroidal. Yeah, Choroidal calcification. choroid calcification. We are perfect. Now, epidural. This is very important. Sometimes hypodense area within epidural, we call it swirl sign, which indicate the site of active bleeding. And by the way, this is the typical epidural when you have a wound and the hematoma just inside. This is one of the work of our medical student, maybe four or five years ago. They work on this, each one, just to understand more about the uh, possible bypasses for aneurysm, it was a very, very nice experience. Mm, that's important because that's part of residency that I put the, that book out of zero, from zero, and uh, actually out of, out of nowhere. I have no vascular neurosurgery practice in Iraq. I have no vascular neurosurgery in my hospital. I am just a dreaming resident to be a vascular neurosurgeon, that's it. And in the fourth year of residency, I get the chance to see one of the pioneer in vascular neurosurgery uh, and his uh, uh, professor uh, Robert Spitzler in US for a short course. And in that course, I asked uh, Dr. Uh, Spitzler that, can I send you a book or if I write a book about questions on vascular neurosurgery. I'm thinking of that. If I finish this book, can I send it to you at that to, to have your opinion? And he said that I will be retired. And he asked Dr. Nakaji if he have a time for that. And he just accept that, okay, you can write it and send it. If, if we like it, we can put a forward for that. And that's how it happened. I get back, I'm the fifth year out of six in residency and I'm writing this book from zero with no experience in vascular, with no experience in publication at all, with no experience in even a research publication. I never write or, because this is published in 2017 and in 2017, I know about, I know zero about research because I start researching in 2017. So that's that's the point. It's it's for me it's a passion. And the most important that I want you to think of is that I search through my study and through my passion with vascular, I I, I understand that wow, there is no much question on vascular neurosurgery in the ordinary neurosurgery books. So I'm studying neurosurgery questions, but there is no much vascular. We need more extensive question. That's why I get this idea. And the point is, this is the first subspecialty question in the neurosurgery at all. There is no such category before. To get to one subspecialty within the neurosurgery and put it in like 350 MCQs on only vascular, it's not a regular idea. And that's why people like it. And Professor Peter Nakaji put a forward, and in his forward, I will I'm honored that he said twice that this will be helpful for everyone like me. I hope you you an, another statement. I hope you will benefit from this book like I did. And this is for me is just 
I'm I'm just a fifth year resident in Iraq at that time. Wow, what's this? He's a very well known professor in neurosurgery in vascular neurosurgery, and he's saying this. This is very uh, heart touching, and actually I, I I went into tears just when I read his forward to the book. And that's how people can support you if they see the two things, passion and orientation. Passion alone is not enough. Orientation alone is not enough. You need to do both and people just will be helpful. At that time, this is like a fourth year resident or fifth year, we don't have op operating microscope. So I bring my surgical loop to the OR and it's it was very costly tool at that time just to do the surgery with, with it. And I'm trying to con convince my surgeons, my superiors, supervisors, just to let me use this as part of surgery. And this is very, very important step that you build your practice. I want to use this. Even if they don't use it at, the, at this time, I want to use it. I know the future is for micro surgery. So we don't have microscope or the microscope is not functioning. At least there is a surgical loop for, I think, two years. Then until I graduated, I never operated on microscope, using microscope. And that's why I'm very important because I'm now four or five years after graduation from residency, I'm pure microsurgeon. I never do surgeries without microscope. So that's the difference. I have the intention. I try whatever possible at that time. And I, I try in the lab from zero. And once you are graduated and you are a surgeon, you can practice what you are learning or train yourself in. This is a surgical loop. It was very nice experience. And this is very important, like how we built one of the room in, the, in our residence in, in, in Iraq, in our local hospital, just to evacuate the room, then paint the walls. And it's just a self-effort. It's not a regulated one. And we buy just cheap microscope, try to build things from nothing. Um, let's, let's, let me get you to this. Can you, can you see the name here? Was there? Yes. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's, uh, Abdurrahman Sabah is, uh, from KSA. One of my books that I studied during residency is this book is about cases in neurosurgery. However, I found this illust illustration, just simple, require no artistic uh, uh, like um, no ar artistic talent to bring it. However, it's very, very helpful. I can bet you maybe 10 years later, you will get back to this picture to understand a little bit about dural IV fistula classification. It's very difficult, the Borden and Cognar classification, very, very difficult. But this person who's a neurosurgeon in Saudi Arabia now, I think is a pediatric neurosurgery, one of my uh, aspiring mentor, put this simple illustration in his book. And for me, that was a very important moment. I understand I, will, I should go to illustration. I will never study a topic without searching for illustration, at least in Google images for all the available illustrations, maybe people studying not only in books, just to have more and more idea. And this is how I think it, it, it will be very uh, memorable studying because in neurosurgery, it's not a medical college. You, you should not forget anything that you already study. Uh, just an example of resection cavity. I think this is a case of high dated, and this is the brain, how thin the brain is. And this is just the resection cavity. There is a risk of this post-op to have just a collection. So you must be sure that there is a hemostasis because blood can easily collect it in this cavity. We see how that is. This is a craniectomy, not, not a craniotomy. Okay, because there is no bone. This is a professor. I went during residency for five weeks into Turkey for the first time to see vascular neurosurgery and his uh, Dr. Hakan Orchkaptan. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago and is very inspiring person. 
the one thing that I remember from this picture and I want to share with you is that I ask him two things or, or let me, I ask him one thing first is that when I will get back to you on the train again with you, the answer is no, you don't need me now. You get the idea from what I have or what I think about vascular neurosurgery. Now the next step, you should go there and there. He, he identified two centers that this is the next level for you. And the, I, the message is that how uh, professional and at the same time, how humble this person is that he can say that you can, you can come at any time, but he take extra step just to help me building my career that no, you, you understand what I'm doing here. Don't get back another training, just repetition go to the next step and he's the person that just let me inside the us for the first time because he just arranged on a course he find a course and just pay that course for me just he want to help that's that's how how our mentors teach us and that's why we are doing this mentorship as part of thank uh, if our thankful effort for them uh, because this is a, a huge message. Mm, just a part of our lab, we think like, let's get a, a, a more professional step. One of our colleagues, he's an illustrator, he's now in Sw Switzerland. He put the lenses of microscope, the handle of microscope, and we put the uh, circle of fullness for the first time in any logo, I think, ever. And we put the name of the lab. I put the name by my name just to put a, a, a solidity for it. I don't like it as a, a neurosurgery training lab. No, I want it more professional. So we get a logo. And now I'm just sharing with you how we build this from zero. Then we collect a little money from our fund, then bring uh, the logo more professional for future maybe uh, footage and uh, um, presentations. Uh, then we start to apply for ourselves. I should train myself first, then teaching others. And yeah, this is again, part of residency to go into detail. It's not uh, only to know this is acute or uh, chronic hematoma. You need to know all the types with all the changes in the MRI. So there is uh, extensive tables on it. Now getting more professional, we have lending instrument just from the OR and simplified iPhone cover with a glove just to put the stitches more, more and more professional. And now we are getting a next step. Let's compare the microscope with the surgical loop so people can try both here and understand more about how to use them. And then I think it's obvious that we get more instrument. Yeah. And I think this is similar to our circle today that we travel through midland structure, but this is more about the system. And I, I would suggest that if you want to study a neurosurgical anatomy, go for systems because this is this is the topic that you will never see in medical school and medical school anatomy. It's it's beyond medical school, and this is very interesting. Again, the last few pictures, just I want to share you this experience because we are trying. The greatest challenge is believing it was possible. Let's stop at this. Let me listen to two, three comments, then go to the next item. I think this is very important part of this residency to share some experience but I want to listen to your thoughts, maybe comments. Uh, yeah. Do you leave your hand up or Abdulaziz? Uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Samar, for this inspiring story. The way you have started from the zero, the way you have this passion in order to continue. You are the one who deserved to say to him that you already started from the zero. You are a very inspiring person. Uh, you are 
you are a guidance for us, uh, in fact. Thank you, thank you so much for this story. And for me, even in Al Ahsa, we have a very, a very small neurosurgical department. So, inshallah, I hope that I can, I can be like you, inshallah, in the future, and I build up this department to help the people in my region, so they cannot suffer anymore. Thank you, Dr. Samar. You're welcome. Uh, the thanks for you for being here first, because this is part of your passion that you spend such more and more time with, with just learning about your uh, uh, passion more and more. And this is a very important step. Number two, I think I don't deserve this uh, uh, appreciation. I think this is part of our job. I, I think this is the first statement I share with you and the group that our duty in life to support each other and make the next generation even better. I, I say this out of four responsibility that I am feeling responsible. When you say that this is one of your dreams to build a department in somewhere, in some area, small city, that's part of our responsibility. I will, I will be happy to support you through the process to guide you. And I think that's, that's very important because if I have a, a mentor at that time, that will make things much easier and um, maybe uh, less time consuming. That's what I'm doing here. Just I'm trying to make, th make the road just straightforward for you more and more. And I think it, it's, it's easy and it's part of our responsibility. Yeah, definitely. You can do the lab as, as much as, as you think of. It's uh, more and I know more and more about this. And yeah, we can just uh, guide you through doing everyone to you, you want to do. The most important is your passion. Is that once you have the passion, all the registration, all the steps is just an easy process. Uh, thank you. Um, any comment or we go to the next? Do you have a time, John? Uh, the, yeah, we have time. Okay. So uh, let me go to uh, a research thing that I promise I should say, but I will, I will ask. Yeah. So my question is for all of you now. Um, who, who, who's, um, can you define the innovation for me? Anybody? Yeah, Jeff. Perhaps it is the creation of a very new idea that does change uh, your work and does change the outcome. Okay. Practice. Zina. Uh, creating something that did not exist before and it's function to do something useful, I think. Okay. Uh, establishing a revolutionary idea that can that could change something in a specific era. I agree. Tawarak. Yeah, doctor. I think it is the process of uh, that involves multiple activities to uncover new ways to do things. Just like not a creation, but finding different ways to do something. Okay. Sam. Um, I'd say it's like pioneering creative methods to tackle um, existing issues or matters uh, in life. Okay. Um, thank you for for this uh, diverse definitions. It, it's around the same concept. Uh, definitely, it's uh, it's and it's all about understanding. So this is how you describe a thing. So it's not a true or false answer. And yeah, I think all of you are correct. What I want to say is that the innovation in a simplified way is uh, 
the combination of two terms to have an idea that is new and useful. So new and useful is equal to innovative idea. And I think you get this through this meaning through your descriptions. And the, the, the next point is that the balance between a new and useful, this is the real innovation. So whenever you have, I think one of you just described, just to try a new idea as something different. Something different means something new, maybe not always useful, as useful as required. And in the same, on the opposite direction, if you have a something, a, some idea that's useful, that's solving a problem. However, it's not a new, it's just a repetition or just a adaptation from elsewhere. So this is not a full innovation. I want you to think of this, um, uh, uh, let's say in, in that way that any idea, if it's a fully uh, innovative idea, it should be very useful and very new at the same time. As an example, I want you to put in mind for the next step, because for the next step we will share the research or you will start your research alone or you already have some ideas, some teams and you are working on. So advice wise, it's the more you, um, you test your idea with these two concepts, the more you understand the value of this work. Sometimes it's very nice work, very nice research idea. It's, it's very unique. At the end, it's not useful enough. And that took me to the next point. This is the first point that I want to say about research. I told you that there is six point I want to share with you. This is how innovative your work is. This is important. And I need a, a clear definition just to test each idea, test each research with, these, with this de definition about how useful, how unique, how useful, how new. That's important. And useful is, is uh, and unique get us to the next point is that the experience. And the third point is the opportunity. How you would know as a medical student or as intern or as a, or as a resident, how would you know that this idea is new? The easiest question is, I will go to literature and search and if it's there or not, okay? So this is the definite correct answer that, yeah, I should search any idea that you have. The first step, you should go to literature review. However, I would say that if, if you have an idea about something, you need an, an experience with that topic at least consultation. If you are not working with a resident or a surgeon that do a supervision for you, that will be the change. That will be the difference. Let me give you an example to, to get this in, in, in mind. If, if let's say uh, Osama doing a search about, let's say aneurysm um, changing, that the search that we said just before, uh, he is describing aneurysm change before the surgery. And he searched the literature and he never found about this. Now, if he asked me, I will, with my li humble little experience in this topic, uh, I would say that there is different definition of what, what you are searching for. It's not only the growth, it's the discrepancy. Do you search the literature for discrepancy in size between a pre and post? Do you search the literature about the CTA or the MRA or the catheter comparison with the intraoperative view? Because these are also the researches that give the same point, give the same idea, is there is a growth or not? So for this example, let me summarize this, that you need to check if it's new or not, you need to search the literature. But the most important, what you put in a search of literature. It's not about a literature review and how we get a mesh term 
and from mesh term we we can start. No, while anti I'm talking about the surgery about neurosurgery. It's it's not that it's not there. You need an experience uh, to uh, collaborate with the experience to have this pathway correct. That there is a lot of terms. There is a lot of suggestions for the same idea. So you need those experience, those alternative terms and terminology, then you get your literature review correct. This is the first point. The second point is that the real references. So now we are doing one of the paper about the history of some, some uh, procedure related to aneurysm. And we are searching the literature about the history about this procedure. And we find a few resources. However, who's we know inside the neurosurgery? Who's the person or who's the, the centers that start this uh, step, let's say? So we go directly to some textbook and some references that's not a regular literature. And we found the real story. We found the real history about this step of surgery from where it starts. So this is not covered with the literature review. However, if it's not considered simply the paper and with a wrong conclusion. Another example, if this procedure, let's say Mohammed Imara doing a history about aneurysm surgery, let's say, and Mohammed going to literature and bring everything, make a timeline, make a table and start with this, then this, then this, then this, and that's it. And he didn't include the notes from Professor Yeshargil, who was who is known as the founder of microneurosurgery. And if he didn't include his text, this will be out of box, sorry, out of target review. You cannot say anything, like it will be rejected forever, this paper, because you are not including the person that. Uh, really uh, start this surgery. So this is just to give you an idea about the difference between an innovative, a real new, a real um, useful topic versus just a thought. And I would suggest just an idea, idea versus innovative idea. That's why I'm sharing this with you just to let you know and think about, okay, let's get our work more innovative. Let's judge our work with the best resources. And yeah, I'm sharing this because simply we have such experience before that we do this article. It's never, the, it's never mentioned in literature. It's very unique. There is no paper describing this procedure ever before. However, this procedure is already done, but there is no review of this procedure. And at the end, it's rejected from everywhere. And we know later that, well, this is just part of every aneurysm surgery. We must search all the aneurysm literature and, and searching about this detail and how they describe it, because the description is different in the 60s from now. And by the end, we understand that this is a fake, this is a not important topic, and we just throw it out. This is not important anymore, because, or the alternative, which we can change to, okay, let's include all the things, all, all the real things. But yeah, after spending many, uh, days and months in one topic, and at the end, it's not unique enough. It's already mentioned in many references. That's not the papers that that's very important to have just to put in your mind. So that that what I mean by experience. So to get the the uh, the research steps in in the correct way, and let me get an uh, uh, the third point, which is very important for me. Let, let's have, uh, who, who's, who's there alive? Mohammed, you're, you're the only one alive here? Okay. Uh, hi, Mohammed. <laughs> uh, I mean alive that I can see his face. 
otherwise people are just busy or making them busy so let's back to muhammad um so if if let's review what you just uh, have as an experience with aneurysm surgery can you describe for me what are the steps of aneurysm surgery in general and simple it's, i'm not asking about the operative step uh, i'm asking from presentation to the outcome yeah, just you, what, do you, what do you have in mind you get to the imaging uh, you plan an approach you get to the approach you choose uh, whether would you coil or would you clip and uh, that's it and find the outcomes and to prevent uh, future uh, complications okay so you you just this is part of the example because you just and give us some uh, terms like imaging, planning, choosing of the approach, and um, choosing the treatment, also the outcome and possible complication. And if I ask you about what, what are the factors affecting the outcome? Everything. Uh... Do you, do, you, do you get my point that you said one of the term is outcome? Okay, let's go deep. And what 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 do you think that the factor affects the outcome? From the start to finish, uh, whatever technique you use, uh, the time of the presentation, the patient uh, himself, uh, what is his history, everything. Okay, so uh, I would suggest, like, if, if we have this topic, we want to plan how to write this as a paper. So about the complication of aneurysm, and now you you are you are saying that it it, it depends on the time from the start to the end or related to complication. Okay. So if we want to go to the scientific pathway and made a research out of this topic, so what's the next step you you suggest? We define a research a research question. Uh, research question, complication of aneurysm. What are the complications of aneurysm? Okay. I think it's uh, too wide. We need to narrow it down. Okay. What's your suggestions? Uh, like, for example, uh, we choose one type of complications, such Which? as okay. uh, maybe post-operative bleeding, Okay, do you think is post-operative bleeding something important to make a paper on it? Because you will spend, this is the topic that you are choosing for yourself. And for example, I, I'm giving this an example and you will spend the next month writing from morning to night about this topic. So that's, that's part of the background that we have, you and me now, that you will start for the next month writing only in this topic. So do you think, that the post of complication, the hem the hemorrhage, you said just the bleeding yeah. or as a part of post of complication. You suggest that this is innovative innovative idea of research, or what do you think? I think it's just a review of what we know right now. And uh, it would like recommend for a physician what to do. And uh, do you think it's not steady, not st not studied yet? Yeah, of course, it's uh, well studied, but, uh, you know, updating the information every now and then is a good thing, especially uh, because techniques differ now. Uh, and if you have, uh, like, uh, a review 2012 already there? Yeah, I would do another one. It's been like 10 years. Okay. And do you think there is a journal and US or Europe will accept that? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. I would have like previous experience. Of course, I'm here to learn from you, but I think so. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's very good. Um, <laughs> that's why we are discussing this now because what I will answer you in a real life, I will say, okay, try it. Let's do the review. Let's see what are the reviews prior to your topic. 
okay? Then we can do this article. I will never say no to you about an idea that you already generate, okay? However, if you ask me a step before, like now you are, you are asking me, let's say you are teamed together, at the last step, you say, okay, I don't know if it's accepted or not. What do you think? Uh, for me, I will be, I, I, I would think that it may be a publishable, acceptable article. But if you ask me just earlier, okay, that will make things easier. Or if you attend a surgery before take that decision, okay, that searching for the experience, I mean, your personal experience, okay? So this is an opportunity. If you create an opportunity for you, this will make the, the, the research idea. And then the outcome of the research will be more innovative. And actually, at least will be useful because you can, you can write from your room about anything in the world, about any specialty. You can review any topic you have in mind based on literature or whatever. But having an, a personal experience, having um, a chance of observing any process in life, by the way, it's not about something specific, any process in life, if, if we are discussing, let's have an innovative idea about a uh, hotel, experience and how we arrange uh, like uh, the mini bar let's have a new idea about how to do a new mini bar and hotel as an experience the the my point is that let's go and have let's go and have this experience again and again and let's ask people that have some experience with that point and then have a feedback from them so you are not searching for idea from them, but you are observing the process to find a real point that if you work on this, this will be useful. That's the message. That if, you, if any one of you have the chance before and now or again in the future to observe any process related to anything that you are interested in, whether seeing the patient in outpatient or doing a surgery or attending intensive care, whatever. But if, it, if you are interested in a topic and there is something related to that topic, let's say management of head injured patient in ICU, go and observe a little bit, like 30 minutes, like one hour, just observe what they are doing with the patient and ask some simple questions. What, what you, why you are doing this? Why you are doing this? What's the most difficult part of managing such patient? Okay, so you are asking a real people, like a surgeon, like a nurse, about uh, maybe the family, about what is the pain point, what are you struggling with? From that thing, you will have the first part of innovation which is the usefulness. That's the way that I would suggest this will change you from, I know till now, like this year, I have a direct contact from at least hundreds of students around the world. I'm interested in research. I have many research on this and this and this and this, and I want to collaborate. There is hundreds, okay? So that point, will make you at a different level, make you at a different orientation. This change you from a soldier and a team into a, a leader that I know how to think. I know how to bring a useful idea about neurosurgery and I'm starting from zero and I'm collaborating with many mentors just to develop the idea, then I will write it. The, the written part of the research is equal to one of 10, not more, okay? So the idea is most important. And whenever you have the full idea, you imagine, okay, I will go through this process, then I will collect this. This is very important. Uh, the, the next point I, I would say is that uh, the time frame, because many people, can suggest 
Okay, let's go to the all patient, have a question, uh, research question, and have surveys and ask them to fill. And let's do a prospective. Okay, prospective means that you are doing the study on the new patient. And if you if we are doing a two patient per week, so this means that you should wait uh, two years to have 100 patients. Okay, so sometimes looks like nice idea, but it's not doable. And that's part of mentoring. That, that's what I will try to do with, 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 with my team or my collaborator in general, just to have the discussion pre-decision about the title. You, might, you, must, you may bring a title that of innovative idea, but like exploring this, having many ideas, having many possibilities about what are the possible pathway. We can do this as a literature, we can review, we can do this as a systematic review, we can do this. Okay, let's do this as an opinion, Mohammed, about your opinion about this complication, just opinion paper, and at the same time, start your uh, prospective study. Because that opinion paper will be very important in two things. Just to consolidate that this idea is yours and already published. And at the same time, we'll be convincing to the people collaborating with you that I have this idea, but not this idea as a word file or as an email, as a published paper. And I'm trying to make this as a real study on patient. So even your invitation will be at a different level. That is the category that's not present in the hundreds that already a medical student doing research, trying to have improved their experience and to get a, a more uh, big steps in, in, in their career. So I hope you get my point. You get my point, Mohammed, for example. Yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah, that that's that's related to vision. You have you, you need to create that opportunity, the opportunity to observe the, any process related to your topic. And from that opportunity, you will have a more realistic, a more possible useful idea. That's why I share, I didn't teach you neurosurgery. I didn't teach you what are the indication, the real indication of aneurysm surgery. What we are sharing here, and I'm teaching you just to have you have some experience about the surgery, sometimes rupture, sometimes technique, sometimes post-op, what we are dealing with the post-op, what we are dealing with the pre-op, that's important because having one of these to be observed by a medical student and then changing this into a, a paper, that's the great achievement. That's when I see this paper in your CV, this means a lot that you are a, a patient enough you are oriented enough to have this research, okay? Because patience is part of neurosurgery. If you are not patient enough, you you, you will you will you will struggle a lot. It's not either or, but you will struggle a lot. The last point that so I the point is that you should find the opportunity to observe. Then you will find innovation. It's not in in the roof of your room, maybe in the roof of your room, you have you have the idea, but to make it a real innovative idea, just take it to the some example, some observations. Because I'm, I'm saying this because some students are just oriented enough. It's not about clever or not. It's just orientation, oriented enough that I have an, an opinion about something. Can you share with me some this? Can I have a meeting with you? you can describe to me your experience with that topic so I can share my idea with you. This is a totally different level, okay? And I'm asking myself why I don't share this with you now at your beginnings so you have a, a right direction. Um, experience, opportunity, creating opportunity, importance of presentation is is, is a huge. I, I, would, I would never suggest a research paper from zero unless we have at least a, one presentation about it, or let's put it on the other side. If you have a, a, any presentation about any topic, so 
the difference is that when when let's say Osama doing a, a, a PowerPoint about a topic, about aneurysm. If you want to study aneurysm, you can study aneurysm, it's easy. But changing this study into a PowerPoint, this require double, triple change, check for every information. And that's the difference. You can say that 90%, okay. But when you put the 90% in the slide, you will search again and again and make sure. And that's the real studying. That's the thing that you will never forget. And through this process, you will understand what, what is the solid information and what's the, the, the just just an idea or just, a, a, just an understanding. It's not a real information. So just to give you an idea, try to do a presentation about your work, your ideas, and then change this, including the feedback, including the questions, change this to a paper. That's a very, very uh, direct way for innovation. I started, I found the response. I present about aneurysm and only this part of my presentation, this is an example, and only this part of my presentation have an aggressive discussion and opinion. So let's, let's put this uh, topic, exact topic, specific topic as a separate paper, as an opinion, as a discussion paper. And that's what I pushing toward is that opinion paper. Opinion paper is very important to consolidate your idea, your knowledge. Uh, we are scientists. If you want to be a scientist, you don't need to post your idea on Facebook. Post it in a, in a scientific journal. Give, give it a more reliable writing than support it with reference and give it as a, an opinion why you put it as a post, okay? Just think like that. Uh, this, this will be just a, a, a more pathway for uh, a real publication, a real achievement, a real CV steps that you, will, you would need at, at your uh, career, early career. The last point I want to say is that science versus publication. Sometimes there is urge for publication. Everyone has this. And sometimes there is, there is urge for science that I have this idea, I need to pay, put it as a paper. I don't uh, mind any journal. I need only this paper to be there. I need to have this published, okay? Because you are looking for the science and you know if you send this to the best journal, they will not accept because there is still not evident. However, this is very unique idea. Let's publish it. Anywhere, <laughs> at least it's not a predatory journal. It's a good journal, but let's publish it. And from that, you will go to the next step. So sometimes you are starving for science. Sometimes you are starving for publication. You feel, okay, I, I do very good papers, two or three papers per year, but I need more. So I need to collaborate with everyone, do everywhere, do whatever type of research, whatever the level, whatever the topic, I will do research. And these are, I think these are phases of every, uh, let's say every neurosurgeon scientist. It's, it's a phases. You can, you can tell if you go to any pioneer in neurosurgery, have 300 or more publication and search for the first few publication. And you will smile when you see the titles. Like you, you will see oh, different titles and this is not related to neurosurgery. This is not a good journal. This is, this is not understandable collaboration. It's about uh, some area. However, the author are just from all around the world. So you, you understand, oh, okay. They start also in this way. Then with the time they have more and more publication. So the urge for publication will be less. I think after you have 30 publication, you will have less urge, and then you will think, now I need equality. Or sometimes I need uh, to express myself. And that's that's also different phases. Sometimes you need, I need my ideas as Muhammad, as Osama, I want this idea to be out. Sometimes, no, I need just a quality. I need a very good article in a very good journal I want I can I will contact any 
a, a good institution in Europe or US or local good institution. And I will tell them that I'm ready to be part of the team of any research at any position just to be involved in a high level work. All are true, all are correct, all are a part or phases of your future career. I just want to put this pathway now just to prevent struggle between you in the future. Because sometimes I feel many of you, just you are young, you are still, in, especially in the early uh, medical school years, you are just affected by your surrounding. So I feel there is a revenge behind the topic that I need to do a research because someone just beside me doing the same. I, I, this is very common and the answer is all are correct, all are true. It's never a bad experience unless it's not a publishable, it's not a, 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 a it's a predatory journal. In those example, it's, you end with nothing or you end with a very bad reputed journal. That's it, that's only the exceptions. Otherwise, all are a good experience. And yeah, you, you will build it with time. Having the same opinion constant, and I think I will see you in the future, two years later, five years later, and maybe 10 years later. I should listen every time to totally different opinion totally different interest, because this is how you will develop with the time. Now you are thinking, everyone is in different phase. So let's say one, one of you are thinking about, let's do a systematic review. This is one of the highest evidence in neurosurgery. I want to do a systematic. Okay, one year, one year later, I, I done with the systematic. It is good. However, it's not a real work. Oh but it's a real work. Yeah, yeah, but I have a systematic now. I need another more real, more real about series of patient. I want to anal analyze a series of patient. Or sometimes a few years later, you, you see the same person. I want to do uh, innovative lab work. Lab, you need a lab after all your publication? Yeah, I need a lab work. I need it from zero. I need to explore the effect of giving more sodium on sheep with head injury and to see the, the response. Okay, all correct, all science, just you need to be oriented about the variability. Then the conclusion of this talk, I, I'm sorry, this is very long, but this is how it should be done with the examples. The conclusion is the following. There is many way of success. Knowing more and more about ways and pathways and different experience will make you more flexible. Flexibility will give you the next important term. Easy, easy to deal with. There is many good scientists that you cannot deal with them. It's difficult to deal with them. That because I think because there is no much flexibility in planning. Do, being flexible, especially you are young, you must be very flexible. You must be very adaptive. Inclu uh, your beginning at any team, you are expected to be just fluent with the, with the team, just making uh, time more interesting, just happy to, uh, to understand and to learn. That's, that's very important. I think most of you now, you can say that, Okay, this is very obvious. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> like it's ninety percent of younger people joining team having the wrong direction. What I mean by wrong direction that they talk a lot more than they are expected to do. When I have a resident or a student that once I start to do you know the external carotid artery. Let me give you an illustration about external carotid artery. If the person or the student say that, oh, I know this, I have this in the school, I have I have such a score in the school in the anatomy, and he, he start giving me his experience. Okay, <laughs> I will teach you in summary and thank you, bye-bye, because this is just interruption about 
you, you are receiving information, you are, you are ready to receive information or no, you are here just to show off. That's a totally different. And actually you need to think of that again and again, because sometimes it's just natural, just natural for any new person just to talk about himself, just to let others know, know more about him, about his achievements. I understand that, but please don't do it because <laughs> you are expected to have a silence more, asking, asking maybe more, but at least you are adaptive to any offer about discussion about um, someone who want to teach you. I can say that 50% of the teaching trial end with nothing because of that reason only. People, they don't know that they are talking more than expected. At least uh, for me, when I take any student to the OR, I tell them before the surgery, before we are going to the OR, this thing directly. Your experience in life is important, but not for us. We have a patient and responsibility. Your experience is important, but not for us. Don't tell anybody your experience in life, okay? Just be silent, go and observe people and understand and put comments. If you are, if you are clever enough to put 100 comments behind the, uh, at the end of surgery, this is, this, this is very productive for the future. If you just keep observing and want to comment, that's the wrong direction. So that, that's my advice in general for people who want to attend anything, whether teaching session, whether uh, surgery, and don't mix this with activity because activity means that when there is a question, when there is a comment, you are there. Okay, but without this, don't share your experience. It's, it's, I, I think it can be misunderstood as a term, as a, an advice, but I mean, in this situation, uh, your experience can be delayed at least and will be more important later. At the end of surgery, we have a session and I'm thinking to put a paper on this part only because it's not usual to have a full session with all the attendee. I already shared this with you that a feedback, feedback from every part of the team about today's surgery. What's the difference? What you want to do better? What you notice that's wrong? What's what you notice that's different in this case specific to, to improve the next surgery? That's target one. Number two, to generate more innovative idea, to generate at least point that need to be solved. This is one very, very important to find. That's it. That's the the point that I want to share here. Um, if you have any comment or question, let's listen to this. I will go uh, to end this session. Then we go offline to distribute the researches. For those interested, we have, um, I think, a good number. How many researches available, Mustafa? I think 34 is a good number, yeah. Okay, 34. So, so 34 new idea ready to be written for September. And we need efforts and we need to see actually the effort. That's the first trial when we include new people in any research. So the first uh, experience is to observe their ability and their collaborative effort and their team spirit. That's at the end, we need to be happy. We need to enjoy doing research. It's not a fight, it's a teamwork. So basically we, we will test uh, people during the first research and yeah, it's all uh, doable research. And I think uh, we put a time frame to finish all these research from zero, it's not from zero because we have already the idea and the data. So we, from the current status to the submitted status will be within two to four weeks. So uh, if you have a time, 
if it, it's not about, well, it's a three factor. Just keep this in mind. If you want to write this, write it somewhere. There is a three factor. What's your level? I need to know your level, level one or two or three. Level one, which means I do I, I never experienced a research before. Number level two is that I have experience. However, it's not a, a I, I cannot tell that I'm experienced in research. And level three is that uh, you have a full research experience, a good research in a good journal. It's not a, a simple research in a, a local journal. That's for level three. So first, you need to identify which level for you. Number two is the interest. Are you interested in vascular and trauma and history and education. However, it's not guaranteed for the uh, interest because I will choose the things that I, I think it will work. But if you have a specific uh, interest, just say it. If I, 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 I cannot promise, but if I found a possibility, I will add you to a trauma research if you are interested in trauma, otherwise, uh, I, I would decide what's the best for you and for the research itself. And the third point is that you have the de dedicated time. And this is the most important. I don't need 10 people say that we are interested, we need vascular or trauma or education or whatever. And at the end, okay, sorry, I have two week uh, uh, visit to some relative. I have two weeks exam. I have... Uh, no, you must have this full month dedicated. The next four weeks, if it's free, if you are dedicated to put it all on research, so this is factor one. Factor two, you must determine your level. Factor three, give us your interest. Uh, send these into uh, Zena um, uh, uh, account. We will post this in the group, but this is just to give you an orientation. I will send this in the group now. And I think after having this, we will decide what, what were, will be the exact uh, time for the next session, research session. It will be a research session, maybe Monday, Tuesday, th Wednesday, Thursday. One of these days, we will do a research session. And on Saturday will be the last session for this mentorship. Thank you for your time and uh, yeah, wait for future direction from us in the group. If you have any question now uh, or comment, we are ready. Otherwise, let's go. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, Samra, we'll keep in touch and keep it posted. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.